Town. Friday Night Discotheque, Mowell Town Hall presents Jukebox Jury. Oh, baby love, going to a go-go. The fabulous son of the miracles there opening up the big motor town jukebox jury tonight. And in the studio, a big surprise. It gives me a lot of pleasure to introduce you. In fact, they'd introduce themselves, the 1240 Music Man. Hi, this is Morning Man Sam. Kevin Dagg on the sporting scene. Hi, Laurie Miller, Bride of Breaky Show. And Wellesie from Wellesie's Afternoon Show. <laughs> Isn't it too much? <laughs> Good to see you, fellas. Welcome to the 1240 Music Men on Jukebox Jerry from Motown. We've got a whole lot of beautiful records like number one. Mitch Ryder and the Detroit Wheels. Listen to this one, fellas. You've got personality and Chantilly Lace. Oh, you got to get a load of that one. Too Beautiful by Mitch Wright and the Detroit Wheels. We were so wrapped in fact, we just had to let it go. Here they are, the 1240 Music Men on Motown's Jukebox Jury tonight. And tell us, first of all, what they think of Mickey Ryder there and the Detroit Wheels with uh, You Got It, baby. <laughs> Thank you, Sam. Oh, we didn't get to hear much of Chantilly Lace, did we? <laughs> no, I had to cut it out there. Yeah, I was waiting for that, but uh, I've heard the record before. I like it myself. Uh... But I don't think it's it's the market at the moment. I, I, I can't see it. It'll probably get in the top 40, I think, uh, in the charts, but uh, it won't go very high because Mitch Ryder's tried it before several times with this uh, type of uh, two songs in one record deal that hasn't done it before. I can't see this one doing it. So you would say uh, no? No, no. Not, not for the charts, but I like it. I think a lot of the kids will like it very much. Yeah. Right, I care. Sock it to them. I don't think it's going to be a chart seller, mainly because Mitch Ryder probably doesn't sell here in Melbourne. And personality, as we all know it earlier, by Lloyd Price, uh, was at least seven years ago. And whether the teenage market that are going to buy the record will remember the personality by Lloyd Price, I don't know. But it certainly it's got the beat to sell. And if Mitch Ryder is accepted with that record, maybe it can sell. Uh, I'd like to see Rich, Mitch Ryder do more of his own work than revivals. He seems to be with what now, my love, and uh, doing a lot of revival work instead of doing some of his own composition. I think when he does do his own composition, uh, he could sell better here. Uh, Kev, how would you reckon that one would sell? I doubt whether it would make it. In fact, I'm certain it won't. Right. Uh, Laurie? Well, with the titles, the tendency is to compare them with the originals, which is hard to do. You can't really compare them. So I think I really like, as if I'm an old rocker or something, the old versions of Personality and the Big Bopper, of course, with Chantilly Lace. Very exciting record, and I think it might sell, because this sort of excitement on a record uh, is becoming more popular, although I don't like to see this, uh, for instance, the crowds, I don't know whether they're dubbed in or whether they're actually there, but I don't like this, like Johnny Rivers, Maybelline, and this type of thing, which sound as though... And Bill Shannon, Runaway. That's right. Mm. Yeah. Mm. You don't like that? I don't like that idea at all. But uh, I think the record might sell, because it is exciting, and it's got a good beat, and they'll dance to it. And I think it could make it. Good matter. Thank you, Laurie. 1240 Music Man on Jukebox Jury tonight for Motown. And here he is. Come on, what do you think, Wellesie? Well, <coughs> from my personal opinion, <laughs> I do. I like the record a lot, but I think that this idea of two records in one, the first one he had, Our Devil of the Blue Dress, Son of Good Golly, Miss Molly, that did uh, receive some impact in Melbourne, but certainly not enough to sell enough records as far as uh, Mitch Ryder and the Detroit Wheels are concerned. Uh, I like his uh, record prior to that one. Come see about me. I think that this one would possibly be one of the best records that Mitch Ryder has put down on record. And as far as production is concerned, What Now My Love is one of the uh, one of my favourites because of the production technique of this What Now My Love song. It's certainly been uh, attempted by a lot of people. But for my opinion on this one, uh, I like it, but I don't think it's quite commercial enough for the Melbourne scene, George. So you don't think it's quite commercial enough? All right, that one gets... Uh uh, what does it get? It gets... Uh, oh, gee whiz, Laurie was the only one who voted yes there, fellas. In fact, we had three no's and one yes. Uh, listen, would you mind if I added my opinion in here? No, yeah, Gaff, you like. Oh, won't make yeah, any difference. Well. You fellas don't... <laughs> <laughs> you don't mind, because usually during jukebox jury, I keep quiet and the jury goes ahead, but being, you know, one of the team sort of thing, 1240 men, uh, I'd like to say that that one, I've just got to say go, and yet I've got to say no. I, I, definitely for the pop connoisseur, I would say yes. Mm. I would say no for... Um, sales. So that one makes it still one yes for Laurie, a maybe sort of yes, and uh, four against Mitch Ryder and the beautiful thing, you've got personality 
and uh, Chantilly Lace. If right. that makes it, George, we'll shout Laurie a beer after. Yeah, yeah. I reckon. By the <laughs> way, Thursday nights is uh, Wellesley's beeline to the beer at five o'clock night. How did you manage to make it? Uh, I didn't. You didn't? <laughs> I didn't. I couldn't find a drinking partner. <laughs> Your host is George Wayne on the Motown Show. Right, here's a message from Motown. Fellas, the lemon pipe is on the show with green tambourine. <laughs> The green tambourine sound of the lemon pipers on jukebox jury for Motown on 3DR, radio number one in Gippsland. Uh, let's get round to Laurie and uh, see how he'd start off commenting. Thanks, Laurie. I think it's very catchy, George. Uh, they use gimmicks there. The echo comes in very uh, nicely there on some of the uh, phrases and the little percussion gimmick. I'm not sure how they get it. Uh, similar to the ending of Zabadak or parts of Zabadak, the percussion effect at the end. And that's, that's just what it is, I think, gimmicky and catchy, and I think it'll catch on. It's uh, sold pretty well in America, so I think that's a pretty good enough uh, indication that it'll sell pretty well out here. Righto, thanks, Lauren. Yes, that one has been uh, number four in the States for a while, so it's selling pretty well. What do you think, Kev? Well, I've been trying to work out what's harder to assess, form of a racehorse or form of a record. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh... You don't have much luck either, Gee, <laughs> <laughs> on, very nasty there. For a morning man. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Particularly well, a man that works on sport, too. Yeah, yeah. Why so, do I get him on Saturday? <laughs> well, how do you reckon Lemon Piper's going to win? I don't think it's going to make it, uh, George. It's, uh, as uh, Laurie said, certainly uh, been recorded uh, as a gimmick record more than anything else. Um, I haven't got any real thoughts on the record. It, it didn't get through to me. That's the first time I've really listened to it closely. It doesn't get through to me at all. It doesn't. I haven't got much opinion on the record at all. Mm. <coughs> okay. Cross. Uh, what about you, Keith? Well, I think the record's been around for a long, long time. Firstly, uh, I know we had it as an import prediction platter, and um, I think we would be in a similar position to most uh, radio stations throughout Australia on the, our import schemes, and certainly we flashed it across the air a lot, and uh, as a lot of other stations did. Uh, the thing I the do point like is, what do you think of the record, baby? Yeah, well, if, you, if you hang on to your horses, why not get onto it? I like yeah, well, it. Well, now, having promoted our import system... Yeah. Thank you. You like that, do you? <laughs> <laughs> I, I like the production of the record. I think that strings are becoming uh, a big thing at the moment, and I think production is, is another big thing in records. I, I personally, I liked it. I liked the first time I heard it when we uh, had it as an import. Mm. Um, but... As a lot of records, I can like it, Kevin can like it, any one of us can like it, but it doesn't mean to say it's going to make it as far as... Anyway, you reckon yes? yes. Uh, I'd say yes. Right, thank you very much. Sam? Mm. All right. Yes, well, uh, I love it. I love that record. I mean, I love that record. <laughs> <laughs> Lemon Pipers. I, I like that. It's, it's well produced. What's the name of it, Sam? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now, it's well produced, and I I just flip for the, uh, the shortwave effect on record like uh, Itchy Koo Park had it in. This one's got it in very well, mm. and uh, I'm wrapped in that effect. The production is A1. It's uh, it's catchy. It's had quite a bit of uh, airplay already. Now, the thing is, now it's released, will it get the same airplay as it did have when it was an import? If it mm. does, I think it, it should go pretty well. Top ten, I'd say. Well, thank you, Sam. That makes it there uh, so far. Three, four, one against Kevin doesn't like it. I would say that that one, I've got to join Kevin there and say it won't sell. Uh, not completely joining Kevin, because I reckon it's a good sound. I like the sound. It, it, it really it moves me. It nails me to the wall. It surprises me to hear him. that it did sell in America. It's not oh. really the sound of an American hit record. Wow. Oh, well, I don't know that, Kevin. It is, it is, it is. No, I don't know. No, why is it, Sam? Because it's a form of a ballad, in a way. It's a form of... Uh, well, look, I'll tell you what it's very, I'll tell you what it's very much like. Uh, yet again, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> one ton of merit. Oh, oh no, it's not a cool. No, it's not, no, a cool. no, not the same. You trying to jump on the ballad bandwagon, Will? <laughs> well, ballad. <yeah. laughs> Uh, well, we've, got, we've gone through the ballad idea with Keith once before, I think, and he's got a very <laughs> funny idea what a ballad is. I think Engelbert Humphrey Schneider. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> I had that enough with the bagel last time. <laughs> yeah, well, Kev, you, uh, it, it does write in America, and it's the sort of sound that I think can catch on, but not for sales out here, definitely not. Good, I'm glad you're with me, George. Right, good. Well, that one gets... I'm uh, I like it. Oh, my. Yeah, well, that one still gets a yes from our jury tonight. You're on the Motown show, everybody. Jukebox, Jukebox jury. jury. 
Not that one. Right here on the Jukebox Jerry Shuffle Mode, and like Sam just said, 12.40 in your tranny portable with a 12.40 music man tonight. Uh, Sam, Kevin, Laurie, Keith and myself sitting in on a couple of discs for Jukebox Jerry. Listen to this one. Groovy, it's called by P.P. P. Arnold. Written and produced by Stevie Marriott, that little old wild man from the small faces. Uh, Miller's Alley. Huh? Right up in Miller's Alley. <laughs> it sounds like it so far. <laughs> Well, I just love to let it go on and on, which uh, just about is my verdict already. For P.P. Arnold there, and a thing called Groovy, and it just couldn't be more groovy. Written by Steve Marriott, with the small faces, you might have seen him in Melbourne. A very talented fella. On jukebox jury tonight for Motown. Uh, we'll start off with you, Keith. What do you think? It's groovy, it's beautiful, and I think it's going to make it. She uh, started off sounding, well, she's dark for a start. You can't get away from that. Uh, the stateside label is very synonymous to the uh, town of Motown label. They seem to be putting out a lot of very, very similar records at the moment. Um, she started off, with, uh, I think, fellas, a little bit like Sure. The first few bars, very similar to Sure. No, she reminds me of uh, Aretha Franklin, a lot like Aretha. When she got on a bit. But it, it's, it's a type of record that's going to sell, mainly because, I think, it tells a definite story um, with dreams and all that sort of thing. And it's going to really hit home. I like it. It's going to make it. All right, thank you, Keith. Uh, what do you think, uh, Laurie? Oh, I'm a sucker for the soul sound, Jordan. <laughs> That's uh, really in, like Aretha Franklin and all those. And I think uh, she really up against Aretha as the queen of soul, but I think Aretha's still got it, of course. But I, I like the sound, although I don't think it'll really go off in a big way. For the people who like the rhythm and blues and soul sound, they'll buy it, but not enough to really put it way up there. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. What do you think, Keith? That's the most exciting new record I think I've heard in months. Completely sold. The, the backing of it is, is very, very big, and the voices are used to great effect. I think this has a lot to do with uh, a pop record. Uh, if you're going to use voices, use it to a similar effect as it's used on that record. Uh, it has soul, and it has also a big backing. Her voice is strong, and it's a good lead voice. And, and I think that the record certainly is uh, going to appeal to the pop connoisseur that will appeal to the general market. And I can see that making top ten. Well, well, no more need be said from you, Kev. Thank you very much. Very eloquently spoken there, man. Boy, oh boy. What about <laughs> Sam, yeah, well, our morning uh, man? The only thing I like about it is that it sounds like Aretha Franklin, and if it hits the same market, and if it's Just people... come again? Well, it sound, she sounds like Aretha Franklin. Oh, yeah, yeah. I is think, that why that's, that's about the only thing I like about it. I don't like the song. Ah. Uh, but uh, if it hits the same market that uh, Respect did mm -hmm. by Aretha Franklin, and if the same people buy it, I think it'll be a big seller. I think it'll, it'll sell pretty well. It's not as commercial as, as things that Aretha Franklin's been putting out, particularly Respect, which was very commercial. Well, that was it's the only commercial one that she yeah. did put out. But it mm. seems to she seems to miss the genuine soul that Aretha Franklin puts into her records. I don't think she, she gets as high as Aretha Franklin. I'm not really comparing her with Aretha Franklin's work. I think you must. No, I don't think so. No, well, uh, as I said in the beginning, she started off like Cher, and then when she started to reach for those higher notes, you, you, she did sound like Aretha Franklin. Yeah, all right, you'd, you should must closer compare her with Aretha Franklin than you would with Cher. With Cher, yeah. that's a fact. Well, I quite agree, but the first, I'm, I'm not arguing, I'm just saying the first initial start, the initial start of that record did sound like Cher when she was in a softer tone. Mm. Well, that's the first time I've heard it, and uh, it didn't it didn't hit me like uh, a song like Respected when I first heard it. It, it doesn't have that initial impact that on That was me. a walloper buster, wasn't it? Oh, that was That a, cupped your fault. That was a real wow. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I don't like it, but I think a lot of people will, and it'll do very well. If it gets enough airplay, Sam, must mm. make it. The production's got so much to do with it, and as Steve Marriott was in on it, and he mm. should know what he's doing, yeah. but uh, this production sound gives it that soul sound, whereas it could turn out sounding like Tamil or well, mm. it doesn't. It sounds yeah. as closer to the production behind it, Rita Franklin, than it does to, say, the Marvelettes or somebody. Mm. 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 Well, tying that one off, I would say, fellas, that you, we've had votes so far from Sam, yes, Kevin, yes, Keith, yes, Laurie, no. I know it sort of pains Laurie to say that, as much as he likes the soul sound. Uh, I think that record, I would follow Laurie's exact line of thinking. I think it's a great record, but I do not think that it'll take off in Australia. Uh, then again, uh, fellas, something that strikes me very hard here, and that is that it depends so much on exposure. Exactly. And how, many, how many songs has made it in the United States of America? that has made it here. If they make it in the States... Oh, I know the, what you're getting the, at. I know the, what you're the getting next step is words, they will make it in the States. Yeah, unfortunately, I think... Now, we, we're carrying on a bit long on this one, but DJs out here seem to... Uh, maybe I shouldn't point my finger directly at them. Program directors, certainly, uh, seem to look at what is happening in the States and then follow suit. A point in case... Now, we can go on and on on this. Uh, a point in case is Dino Martin. Uh, in a chapel in the moonlight has been released for ages.